Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about Google's new agentic IDE called Anti-Gravity. We'll first talk about some of the core features of what an agentic IDE is and then we'll walk through a step-by-step -step demo of how you can use Anti-Gravity to build a stock dividend tracker application and explore some of the features. So let's jump right in. Before talking about all of the core features, let's talk about one of the key features that differentiates Anti-Gravity from some of the other IDEs out there today. That is the Agent Manager. So what is Agent Manager and how can you use it? You can think of Agent Manager as an autonomous agent agentic coding engine. So what do I mean by that? For example, I can give the agent manager and task and ask it to perform a certain goal. Now I have a list of models that I can choose from, which is going to be completing this. I also have multiple modes like planning and fast. I'll talk about this in the demo, but I have the options of choosing the model too. Now this is really important because I can choose different models for different tasks. Let's say I go with the latest model, which is Gemini 3. Once I choose Gemini 3, the model then creates an artifact. So what is the artifact? So it it creates a task list, it creates an implementation plan and walk through depending on the goal that you have asked it. But the two key artifacts that it provides and which is personally my favorite is the screenshots and the screen recording. So what does it exactly do? So once you give it a task, it's going to create that particular output, but not just leave it there because we have all seen scenarios where a model comes back and says, yes, I've completed your task, but in reality, it is not right. What differentiates anti-gravity is that using the computer use agent, it's able to go and browse to that particular feature, verify that the functionality is actually present, also has access to the DOM. So any errors that you might face or if functionality can also be verified, but not just screenshots. It can also take screen recordings. If you had certain accessibility features you would want to test, it then records a screen recording, which is then again used back by the model to verify that the functionality that the user asked for has actually been implemented. Once all of this is complete, it then provides a neat summary of what was completed and provides back to the user using the agent manager inbox. You can think of it as an email saying, hey, this task is complete. Now this puts the agent manager in control and I can have multiple asynchronous tasks spun up in parallel. For example, I can ask it to add features saying, hey, I need visualization for my dividend tracker. I need calendar view for my dividend tracker application, etc. And all of this can be done in parallel. I can then step out, maybe go grab a coffee and come back and the agent is going to complete all of these actions, but not just complete it. It creates verifiable artifacts too, and then gives me a detailed summary of what was completed, what went wrong, and what are the next steps. If, for example, you've configured your agent in such a way that you need manual input at every step of the way, for example, you can ask the agent to say, every time it executes a CLI command, I need the agent manager approval. In that case, when you come back to the inbox, it's going to say, I need you to allow me to run this particular command. So that's agent manager of anti-gravity in a nutshell. There's a lot more features, but I'll walk through those features when we start building out the demo. So let's jump right into anti-gravity. All right, so here we are in anti-gravity. At this point of time, you're able to set up anti-gravity with your personal Google account. So there's a couple of options. You can import your existing configuration from VS Code. I'm gonna start from fresh. So here are some of the configurations for the agent assisted development. This is where you set the review policy. You can also tweak it later on. You can set it in such a way that the agent asks you for every step of the way, wherein you're, you're asked to review it or approve it. You can make the agent always proceed, or you can let the agent decide depending on the complexity or the severity of the task whether you want the user input or not. You'll see this view wherein on the right hand side you can see the agent and on the left hand side you can see the anti-gravity settings wherein which is also a traditional IDE. Now what I'm most interested in is if I click on the open agent manager view I have a couple of options here which is I can start a new conversation in a playground or a workspace. So what is a playground exactly? So when if you're looking to vibe code or experimental certain isolated features playground is great but if you're looking to work on an existing code base or add features to an existing code base that's where you would want to use a workspace. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new workspace called dividend tracker anti-gravity. Before we ask the model anything, there's a couple of configurations too. Number one is the inbox view. This is where the agent manager is primarily going to be at. You're going to spin off asynchronous tasks to the model and then look at your inbox to see the status of the model or if you need to provide any input. Also have a couple of options wherein the, I can choose the conversation mode as planning or fast. Depending on the complexity of the task, you can either use it for planning or fast. I also have model options. Obviously we have the Gemini 3, the latest option, but outside of that, there's also third-party models like Claude and GPT-OSS as well. Now, 
if you did not want to have be residing completely in the agent manager view and if you wanted to be more hands-on with the code you can switch over to the editor view which is going to give you a interface which you're familiar with but for now let's go back to the agent manager view let's give it a task so here's what i've asked it i've asked it to create a simple dividend tracker application which is going to give me the dividend percentage of the list of stocks that i added i'm going to go ahead and ask it to use the planning mode you can see that there's an option called follow along with the agent so what that means is anytime the agent is leveraging a certain tool or creating an artifact like in this case the task it's going to open that for me on the right hand side but if you did not want to see what the agent is doing you can just uncheck this following and you're only going to get the status now if i click on this review i can see the artifacts that the agent has created the first one is the task list. it gives me a detailed step-by-step -step breakdown of the task and what it needs to get it done in order to accomplish what's really cool about this is i can go back and edit any of these information and i can say hey i don't need to use basic css i want to use tailwind i can use tailwind CSS here and then I can add a comment just as I would in a Google document and then submit that to the model in order to make the change. I gave the task to the model and I stepped out and I came back. I would see this in my inbox. I have a new message from the model. Let's open this and I would open this implementation plan. This is the implementation artifact that was created by the model. In this case, I'm going to select this and say I don't want to use mock data. I'm just going to say use Yahoo Finance data and then add a comment on the implementation plan that was created. And then I'm going to review it and submit this. So now that this is created, I don't really have to know what's happening behind the scenes. I can just monitor my inbox and if there's any message from the model, I can then go back and review it. For now, I've given it the Yahoo Finance route. So it's going to make that change because I commented here. So it's edited the implementation plan. You can see that it made the change now. Instead of using the mock data, it now says API routes to Yahoo Finance. It fetches the data from Yahoo Finance APIs and it extracts the symbols. So while this is getting done, I can switch back to my inbox view and then wait for the model to give me a message if then it's complete. So for now, I've just sent it one task. And once the core functionality is complete, I'll show you how we can spin up multiple threads in parallel and then step back and wait for the model to complete these tasks. Seems like I might have reached the model limit at this point of time. So I'm going to stop this task and then restart a new task. Ideally, at this point of time, it was going to open up the browser and then verify the functionality. So I'm not going to do this manually at this point of time. I'm just going to stop it and I'm going to create a new task. I'm now going to ask it to verify the functionality by doing a browser test. You can see that it opened up the browser and when the agent is controlling the browser, you can see that there is a blue halo around it. So at this point of time, me as a user, I'm not able to interact with it. The agent is controlling the browser as well as the top. So you can see that it's adding the stock. It's getting the dividend yield and it's also recording all of this so that when I as an agent manager views it, I can only see the status update for those. So you can see that it's adding a couple of more stocks like Microsoft, etc. So while this is controlling the browser and performing the end to end task, I can switch over to my agent manager and then look at my inbox. Now in my inbox, I can see that there's a new notification or a new message for me from the agent. So if I click on it and let's take a look at it. So now it's giving me a concise summary saying that the browser tests are successful. It launched the application, it added the stocks, it added the Microsoft and Apple stocks, and it also verified that it was in fact correct. Now this is great, but these are not just outputs. These are verifiable outputs that was created based on the artifact. So how can I see that? So if I click on the artifacts here, I can see that the verify dividend tracker video of the screen recording. So now I can take a look at it and ensure that yes, this was in fact actually working because the model recorded the video of the screen recording and then went back and also analyzed it in order to ensure that this is working as expected. So this is the really cool feature about uh, agent manager. Now here's what I can do. I can add more features to it in parallel. So let me go ahead and add a couple of new threads and add, try to add the features in parallel. I want to add the number of stocks for each so that it calculates my total dividend based on number of stocks as input. I'm going to ask this and I'm going to send it. While that is getting done, I'm also going to add another feature which is visualize the dividends in a pie chart. So now I have two 
asynchronous tasks that has been sent to the model and both of them are running in parallel i can choose different models for each of these tasks or i can choose the same model now i can see that it's running i'm going to again i can send these tasks asynchronously and then come back and i can be rest assured that the task is in fact completed and verified because of the artifacts that it produces now i can also open up the editor view to see the actual code now in the editor view it's an ai based id as an editor view i can select certain lines and then i can ask it to add it to the chat let's say i want this to explain this to me i can select this and then ask it to explain so now it's selected these lines it has the context and now i can ask it to explain these functionalities you can also see here i have a list of tasks that i've sent the agent and some of them have been completed and some of them are still in progress so let's go back to the agent manager view and go to the inbox i have two of them which is still running i can also look at only filter it just by the pen task list in this case i can only see that okay the visualize the dividends pie chart and the total dividend is still pending i can see that one of the tasks is complete and the other one is almost complete as well so in this case it says hey the dividend tracker for the total dividend has been completed if i enter in the number of shares it's going to give me the final output but again as i mentioned before there is also a verifiable output as well which i can view and then the visualize the dividend with the pie graph is also something that is currently in progress and that's also complete so now let's go ahead and test the app to see if it's working fine. If I go to localhost 30, I can see that I can add in 10 stocks of Apple and there you go. I have the total dividend, which is the annual income as well as the yield. And I also have visualization of the dashboard. Now, again, as you saw here, the approach of how you interact with the model and an ID has slightly changed with the anti-gravity ID. It's agentic, it's autonomous, and you take the approach of giving it independent asynchronous task and then get the status update from the agent once it's complete. There's a lot more to explore in anti-gravity, but this is a high level overview of the core features and specifically the agent manager functionality. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next one.